continuing this exciting study. So we're dealing with the priest then and his role in the uh, recovery of the leper. Jesus instructs these uh, lepers um, saying, go show yourselves to the priest. That's very instructive. So how is that? One would expect Jesus to say, um, you're healed, you're delivered, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm releasing you from this condition, something specifically pertaining to the condition they have. But instead he says, go show yourselves to the priest, which then indicates that these lepers more than likely, most if not all, were Jewish who would then understand what that meant. In the Old Testament time, the um, priest served a very significant role uh, in the society of the Jews, not only in terms of what we would call spiritual matters, but even in matters of justice, the legal system, the justice system, as we would say it in, in our time, the justice system and the worship of the Lord, those two were closely linked. Because, of course, true justice is to be born out of righteousness. God is a holy God. That describes his nature as pure. Uh, one description of holy is if you were to hold a piece of glass up to the sky, and if you could look through that glass and there be absolutely no distortion of the image that you're looking at through the glass, that's a perfect piece of glass. Lesser quality glass, when you look through it, the image will be um, uh, distorted as when you look at an abnormal mirror. It's not clear. Um, you look taller than you are. You look fatter than you really are. Things of that nature. But if you look through a glass and there's no distortion, that perfection of the glass is a symbol of what holiness is. God is so perfectly upright and so free of any contamination or error. The scripture says God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is so perfect till that perfect glass is a reflection of what true holiness is. That's the nature of God. That's where everything begins because everything starts with God. Man thinks it starts with him, but it's wrong. Everything starts with God. Now, out of the perfect holiness of God, comes a standard of living called righteousness. Righteousness is a standard of living and it is also um, a gift. So let me follow it in this line. Since the pure nature of God is holy, his standard for what should be done is called righteousness. And so man is called then to um, adhere to the righteousness of God and not his own righteousness. The scripture speaks about the fact that the righteousness of man is as filthy rags. It, 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 it's so low and so far below the ways of God. It's as filthy rags, what we would consider righteousness. And so then we have the scripture that helps us with that further. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55, the scripture says, God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, and that's a long ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So that shows us the difference between man and our holy God with whom we must deal. So that righteousness of God is taught to us by his word. And... So then, when God calls us to do something, even if we don't see the necessity of it, we must humble ourselves and comply with it, pursue it, because it is the righteousness of God, which is higher and greater than what we can look into and fully understand. We humbly receive it. As we do, the Spirit of God teaches us the righteousness of God so that we do come to an understanding. And now, out of not only a love for God, but the knowledge of what real righteousness is, the Christian life becomes very full and satisfying and, and dynamic as we learn God. And as God transforms us so that our desires come in line with his way. 
And we'll talk more about that next time.